London used to be the place to put your money in the real estate market when it came to investing in the UK. And indeed, many people chose London over other cities in Europe to put their money in the real estate market. But in 2022, I'm going to give you five reasons why I think London is no longer the place to put your money in the real estate market. Now, these five reasons all affect the United Kingdom, but they affect, I think, London more than other parts of the country. My first reason is this. In 2022, we saw the end of the citizenship by investment program. Now, this tier one investor visa offered residency to those investing two million or more in the UK and allowed their families to join them. Holders of these visas could apply for permanent residency at a speed depending on how much they invested. So a two million investment allowed an application within five years, shortened to three years with a five million investment or two years if 10 million was invested. My point being this, this scheme has been used by 13,000 people and most of these people actually bought property in London as well. Now, with this scheme ending, I believe in particular at the high end, you're going to see less investment and the high end property market in London is going to be quite severely affected. My second reason is this, from the 1st of April 2023, corporation tax in the UK will increase from 19% to 25%. Now the 25% rate will apply to profits over 250,000 pounds. Companies with profits of 50,000 or less will still pay the 19% rate and companies with profits between 50,000 and 250,000 pounds will pay tax at the main rate of 25% but reduced by marginal relief and this marginal relief will act to adjust the rate of tax paid gradually increasing from 19% to 25%. Now I believe what will happen is multinationals will take a dim view, dim view of this and they're more likely to set up their European headquarters in places which have a lower corporation tax rate. And I'm thinking specifically of Dublin, which has a corporation tax rate of 12.5%, rather than the 25%, which they'll have to pay for profits over 250,000. So London, I believe, will be affected more than other places in the UK. Now, Reason number three is stamp duty rates. Now, the stamp duty rates in England and Wales go up according to how much the value of the property is. So, if you buy a property up to 125,000 and you are a UK resident and it's your first property, you'll pay 0% stamp duty and the rates actually go up. So, if the property is more than one and a half million pounds, you'll pay on that portion of over one and a half million pounds, 12%. So the rates are 0%, 2%, 5%, and let's say 10% if the property is in between 925,001 pounds and one and a half million pounds. Now, if it's a buy to let or a second home and you're a UK resident, add an additional 3% to these rates. And in 2021, if you're a non-UK resident, you'd have to pay another 2% as well on top of this. Now, obviously, the whole of England and Wales will be affected by the stamp duty rates, but London in particular is going to feel it more because property tends to be more expensive in London. So with these stamp duty rates, if you're a non-UK resident investing in the UK, you may go for a place like Nottingham where property is a lot cheaper than London so that your stamp duty rate is less. Number four, um, this is also, I think, going to affect the London property market in the future. It's the levelling up agenda of the UK government. Now, the UK government levelling up agenda will mean more funds will be directed away from the capital and to the north instead. Now, this again, obviously, is to 
to the detriment of London, and it means London will have less access to money. So this will also affect the property market. And finally, number five, I briefly want to touch on Brexit. Now, although London has not felt so far the full impact of Brexit, we have already seen more than 400 financial institutions moving part of their business or setting up operations within the EU and shifting assets equivalent to 10% of the UK banking system. Although in the grand scheme of things, this is actually quite small. Nevertheless, with potentially a trade war looming between the United Kingdom and the European Union, I think London could be severely affected, in particular in the financial sector. Now, I have been rather pessimistic about London, but if you're still determined to make an investment in the UK capital, what I would advise is this. Firstly, don't go for high-end property because for the reasons given, um, it's going to be very, very much affected. Also, the centre will be affected as well. I would actually, if you are going to make an investment in London, go for the outer parts of London because in the outer parts of London, um, property prices are more driven by local buyers and not by foreign buyers. And also the yields as well tend to be better in the outer areas of London than they are in the central parts of London. Now in the central parts of London, in places like Westminster, which has been a favourite of overseas buyers, often you'll get yields of less than 2.5% even in some cases less than 2%. So I wouldn't buy here. Also, I would go for one bedroom flats because one bedroom flats in London tend to give you the highest yields. And in particular, again, in the outer parts of London. Anyway, I would love to know your thoughts. Have any of you watching this video bought property in London or were thinking of buying property in London? I would very much love to know your thoughts or indeed, if you are going to buy a property in the UK, have you actually thought that other parts of the UK are a better investment opportunity in London? Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you again for watching this video and I shall see you very soon on the next.